watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube, The Hoosier Garage. Hey, welcome back. Hoosier Garage, and we're going to be doing some primer and paint. Paint meaning color. We're going to have some color finally on this thing. Prep work and the seam sealer in areas, and we've got some uh, the rubber plugs from a plug kit in there. There's certain ones that go in. Uh, I'm not super picky about it, so most of them are in, but a lot of them are not. Uh, a lot of them weren't anyways, but no matter on that. What I want to do in this episode is touch up some areas with primer and match it more with this lighter color, that's the epoxy primer. And I want to bring this with the same tone because if we're going to use a metallic paint, there's a little more translucent type properties. So I don't want it to look darker uh, when you're looking in the trunk than what this will look like. So I'm just going to kind of dust it on, uh, mainly in this area that you'll see when you're looking through the trunk when it's all completed. Because the panel is going to be on here, the inside of the panel will ultimately be green, but uh, this over here you will not see that. Um, so I'm just going to hit the green with that and we're going to go around and do the green, mainly in these show areas. So, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, as far as prep, I'm going to just go over that a little bit. Just what we're going to need to do, because the bad thing about these flat surfaces, especially in these boxed in areas, is you get a lot of dust contamination. Um, good thing about a lot of this, it doesn't matter so much because you get a lot of the splatter from this stuff as the factory did when they put their coatings on top of things. It would kind of emit into the trunk area. Sometimes it would emit under the floors in the pasture cabin and you know your seam sealers are kind of rough so we're, we're kind of duplicating some of that we're adding a little bit of extra with the, the lizard skin in there just to try to get some more sound insulation but uh, there's a couple things you do to kind of cut down on the dust and we'll go over that so okay so first thing i did with a lot of this there was a lot of uh i went through with sandpaper and just kind of knocked off some areas kind of got a little bit of the gloss off of it because this was sprayed a few weeks ago so i just want to freshen it up for whatever we're going to stick on top of it and then go through and blow a lot of it out and then take your vacuum, vacuum it out. And then there's going to have a little bit of residue in certain places of dust, heavier dust that you, you know, might not pull up in the vacuum and you may have missed anyways. So we'll go through and I'll use grease and wax remover. It kind of cuts down on any, any contaminants got on there, any grease, any wax, obviously. And just, you know, fingerprints, stuff like that, that might cause paint adhesion issues. So wipe that down kind of loose, don't get too uh, involved with it. Just try to pick up anything loose and just just a good wipe down, really. That's all you're, that's all you're after. Some of these areas where, where it's kind of rough, don't use a paper type towel because then it's gonna wanna tear or ball up and then you get more dust and lint because that's what you're trying to get rid of, right? And then uh, if you need to, after that, you can take your air wand and blow some of that out. Just try not to get into areas that you're not really worried about, like let's say the door something like that and blow something back in then you're just recycling what you're doing and one more wipe down it's a little tedious but then you should be ready to do what you want to do and on this one we want to cover some of these areas of the seam sealer uh, just so that the paint will stick a little better and then uh on the show areas in the back like i said we want to kind of blend that in with the epoxy primer look so that when we put our green on it it all uniforms in nicely it doesn't have a dark tint to it because of the dark substrate behind it so okay so i've bought many of these i actually have two of them right now sitting around for parts because uh, after a while they do get a little janky uh, even if you keep them clean but uh it's one of the harbor freight guns this one happened to come with a regulator this is about twenty dollars for this and these purple guns are really pretty good you could buy you know really expensive guns if you like just make sure you keep them clean uh, they even have Highline models at Harbor Freight, like 300 some dollars. You could buy a DeVilbus, you could buy Binks or whoever, and you could buy the Pot Under or the uh, Siphon Feed, which is what they are, or these Gravity Feeds. I like the Gravity Feeds. They, for me, they HVLP, they flow pretty good. But um, these do pretty good, but if you take them out of the box, make sure you run a little bit of lacquer thinner through them and take the tip off and wipe this part here and wipe the inside of them off and then run you a little bit of the lacquer thinner in your pot here and throw it through there and then hook up your air pressure and blow some out that'll get rid of any of the oil that's in there and if you're painting something uh, that matters run some other stuff through it first maybe run a little bit of primer 
you know, paint something small and make sure you get out all the contaminants. And then you should be good to use stuff that really matters. So I've done this a few times, so we should be good on this now. And let's get into a little bit of primer and we'll start dusting some of that stuff out. All right, now one thing I'll add before you go putting anything in there, be it primer, be it paint, whatever, I always like to put a little bit of the reducer or the thinner, whatever you're using in particular, that helps water it down some. I like to put a little bit in there. That way, when you go to introduce the trigger and it pulls something through, it's gonna pull through the reducer itself first and any of the primer or the paint that's a little thicker that gets integrated in with it, when it comes out, it's going to be reduced. It won't instantly be thick and wanna gum up in your gun. So the reducer or the thinner that you put in there first, I always like to do that. It just helps it flow out better. And then once you mix it up really good, um, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be good to go pretty much. So you, you need to mix it up really to begin with, with your other in a cup, but this helps it go through the gun and help, help it slide out a little better, if that's the way to put it. So just a little tip I'll give you today. All right, as you saw, I just really dusted this stuff on. Just kind of threw it on here, a little bit of the seam sealer where it's really gonna show so the paint will stick better. And uh, I went ahead and taken just some blue painter's tape and stuck it up across any of the areas where we're gonna weld the quarter panel to, okay? So like a perimeter type of taping. So along this bottom edge down here, that's where the quarter panel's gonna meet up to that and it's gonna plug weld. It's going to be on a row of those all the way up through there. Along this panel, you can't really see the pinch. And then up here on the wheel well. Along here, where the brace between this inner structure and the quarter panel meet together. Part of the drip rail and the top, or the bottom seam, I should say, of the roof. As well as the back section here. Because this is where anything a well is going to be. So there's no point really building up layers of paint there so you just tape it off uh, fairly conservative and that way when you peel it off you'll have very little prep you just might have to buzz it back a little bit even take some sandpaper and you're not going through layers and layers of fresh paint also did it here the tail panel the edge of that or it meets up to the quarter panel and did the same thing on that side over there just makes it a lot easier and this is just kind of a more, uh, I consider it kind of OCD way of doing it, of painting all this up here, because like I said, you'll never see any of this. But it helps kind of meld it into all this around here. And it kind of helps for motivation. And that's what this is all about. That's why I'm doing a YouTube channel to help motivate you. So this is what motivates me, and hopefully we can just kind of pass that forward to you. And you kind of see your color coming into play, and it kind of pushes you into the next stage of your project. So good luck to you on that, if that's what you're looking for, motivation. One thing about this paint, this is GF3. This is the original color that this car came with in 1972. So it's actually the 1972 issue of that, although that color really didn't change much for a few years there. Um, this is more of an industrial level, like a machinery and equipment paint. It's a fast dry. It does not use a activator or an activator. Um, you can reduce it, but this is just what they gave me. And I said, that's fine for what I'm doing, but eventually we'll want to use a uh, anything single stage that's really going to show like in the door jams. I'm going to want to use something that has an activator to it. 
and particularly if you're using stuff on the outside like the actual paint on that you see on the outside of the car that's going to have to probably be base coat clear coat on this particular car so using a variety of paints this is just one of them okay i already have some reducer in here after i clean the gun from the primer so we have some reducer in here uh not a whole lot but we can put some of this in here and just see how far we go and just see how far we can stretch it So I'm going to add something when I use one of the little tiny compressors. It's not the ideal compressor to use for one of these spray guns. Why? It just runs out of air too quick and then you get a very inconsistent situation. That's what happened to my van. Painting the red on that giant surface. Uh, not ideal, but until I get my big 60 gallon fixed, we're just going to have to deal with this in small quantities. The good thing about this is you're just doing little sections. It's all kind of rough, rough scape here. So uh, yeah, but when we do the outside of this, the finish work, the finish paint job, it's gonna have to be with that big compressor because I'm not gonna put up with this. So I've got my mask and I've got this camera set up right here, kind of at the corner above the tail light, and hopefully it's not in my way. I'm gonna be up on this little step due to the car being high. And I'm trying to get up in there first, all these tight areas, because what we tend to do is spray all this stuff like real easy and then try to get in there and then we bump into the paint and all this. So I'm going to try to reverse think this and hit those V shapes and up in the corners and try to get all that stuff first and along this edge. Anything inside of here. I'm not going to do the outside of these rails here. That's going to be finished work for later. But I just want to get everything like that. Like that. You get it? And since I'm dealing with metallic paint, I want to make sure that this thing stays shook up as I go. Make a couple passes, shake it up. Make a couple more passes, shake it up. Because that way it's not all settling, then you get a bunch of the dark stuff at the top and the light stuff at the bottom. The metallic is going to be the lighter of the two, so just keep it in mind. Dust it around on your last couple coats and you should be pretty smooth looking. It's a great time to like and subscribe to the Hoosier Garage.
This is exactly a quart and reduced about anywhere between 30 and 40 percent. I usually, I'm like Steve Bilsage, I just kind of eyeball it. <laughs> and uh, the first coat was a little more reduced, so it was pretty thin. And then after that, it was a bit less reduced. I just reduced it as I went. So you can see it's that kind of minty green color. And it covered exactly what I'm wanting to cover here. I will need to get more to cover the inside of the quarter panels when we have those prepped up and ready. And then uh, ultimately we'll do all the other stuff like the firewall. And maybe up here and maybe into the roof. We'll see. We'll see on all that. But the big target area is this. So when you open this and look in there, sands the quarter panels, it's pretty much all there. We got our color covered up there. You saw where I started all that first. You can see where our lizard skin is under there, that texture, our seam sealer. And I worked around and tried to get as much paint as I could in these voids up in here, painted that. Got a little bit of a run on there, but that's cool because it makes it look kind of factory. They were by all means not perfect. <laughs> 